Um, hi. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. If you are brand new here, my name is Nikki and this is my book nook. Y'all, I am finally here to deliver on the video that y'all have been requesting literally since I started my channel. The amount of messages, the amount of comments I get all the time. Where's your bookshelf tour? I wanna to tour your bookshelves. Show us your bookshelves. I'm here to do it. I'm sorry I put it off for so long. I just always felt like, I don't know, like I'm not done yet. Like I'll show them when I'm done. Whenever they're done, I'll show you. I finally had an epiphany like a week ago that they're never gonna be done. And that's kind of the entire point of having bookshelves and reading and having books like you're gonna forever be doing it. So I'm just gonna show you guys what they currently look like. If they look different in a few months, which they probably will, I'll just film another video and it'll be fine. So I don't really have a rhyme or reason to this. I'm just gonna go ahead and start and go through it. I have a feeling this is gonna be a long video because I have a lot of books and several bookshelves and I like to ramble, but let's just go ahead and get started with the bookshelf you guys always see right behind me. Let's get into it. Okay, so here it is. This is my first bookshelf. It's actually built into my wall and believe it or not, this was a big reason why I decided to get this apartment because I just loved the built-in bookshelf extra space here. Like I can always use more of that and it's just very nice how it's like hidden in the wall. But I guess I'll just start at the top even though there's not even technically books up there but you guys are probably gonna ask about it so I'll just show you. Up here we just have some Harry Styles paraphernalia, my other love, my two loves are books and Harry Styles if you guys know me at all, <laughs> that's the case. But um, I just have up here, these are actually bookends, these little, this little bridge contraption, but I've never used them as bookends. I just use them to display my little deluxe Harry Styles albums. And then that's my Sign of the Times single vinyl, um, his first solo single, very special moment in my life. So I have to display that. And then if we move down to the second shelf, this is my magazine collection. Um, <laughs> kind of one of my pride and joys actually. It's like 95% Harry Styles. There's like a little chunk of One Direction in there. And then just some random ones like Robert Pattinson, Stevie Nicks, Billie Eilish, my other loves. But yes, y'all usually don't see that. The cutoff is kind of right here, but that's, that's what's hiding up there. All my secret Harry Styles stuff. And moving down, let's talk about my first actual books. This is my Harry Potter shelf. Harry Potter is one of my greatest loves in life. It's one of the series that made me fall in love with reading. It's why I have this little lightning bolt tattoo you guys always see. I got it for Harry Potter. That's so hard to show you. It's on the back of my wrist, but yeah. Harry Potter means so much to me. So I have just my paperbacks here. And then this one is the special edition for the 20 year anniversary, it's like all Slytherin. It's like green all the way through. And I actually got this while I was studying abroad in Australia. That's why it's the, and the Philosopher's Stone. I just, when I saw it, I had to have it. It's just very special to me. I'm a Slytherin through and through. Like literally when I take the test, I'm like 90% Slytherin. So gotta have my scarf. I got a couple little pop figures, the nine and three quarters, and then Draco in his Quidditch uniform. Of course, I have Snape and Sirius Black's wands. I love Harry Potter. I don't talk about it enough, honestly. And then moving down, we have my Cassandra Clare Shadowhunter shelf. This is the majority of her books. You'll see where the rest of them are in a minute, but we've got The Last Hours. These books are so freaking beautiful. This is like her most beautiful book she has, Chain of Gold. Haven't read it yet. I need to get back to Shadowhunters. Fun fact, getting into Shadowhunters was actually what made me like start this channel. I was super late to the Shadowhunters game. I read all of that stuff during that time. Like Shadowhunters was super popular, Mortal Instruments, like during the time of Twilight. And I just never read it. I don't know why. I watched the movie for the first time last year and I just was so obsessed. I had to know more. So I started like getting into the world and that's what made me start this channel because I just wanted somebody to talk about these books with. So my first handful of videos on this channel are all Shadowhunters books. And I need to get back to that world and that series, but um, yeah special place in my heart. I love this little shelf. Moving down, this is my Sarah J Mass shelf. So I've got the Akatar series, A Court of Thorns and Roses, and then Throne of Glass. Haven't finished Akatar and haven't even started Throne of Glass. I promise I'll get back to it. You guys are always commenting, asking when I'm gonna finish Akatar. I, it's just, it's a lot. I gotta get back to it. I'm obsessed with it. I promise I will. Um, and then down here, this is my little vampire romance shelf. These are actually, honestly, they should be in a museum. I don't even know why they're in my house. These are my original Twilight books from 2007. They're quite literally falling apart, like breaking down if you try to open it, it like wants to snap open, like all the binding is breaking. This series and the book that made me fall in love with reading, like I <laughs> can talk about Twilight until I'm blue in the face. I just love it, I still love it. This is my first of three sets of the series you're gonna see that I have. 
I'm just very passionate. And then we have the Crave series by Tracy Wolf. Um, you know, another fun little vampire moment, and obviously the aesthetics go very well together, which is why they're on here together. So now, moving from my first bookshelf that you guys always get to see, we're gonna move to the exciting stuff that you guys basically never get to see. My second bookshelf is directly diagonal across my living room. There's not too many books on it, but let's just still go through it. Okay, the lighting over here is very difficult because like the sunlight's trying to come through and it's like messing with this, so I'm sorry if it's kind of hard to see, but up here we have my second set of Twilight books. These are, I think it's called Juniper, like the Juniper box, Juniper books. I'll write it here if I'm saying it wrong. Special edition covers. I wanted these for so long, but I'm like, I do not need those. And then one day on Prime Day, they were like $40 cheaper. Kiwi wants to be involved. <laughs> but I was like, I'm just gonna get them. I've wanted them forever. And I went out and got the hard copies from Half Price Books. And now they're beautifully displayed on my shelf. They kind of match my whole aesthetic of my apartment. I love the trees, it just perfect. Um, this is not, <laughs> okay, this actually is a book related shelf, but like only I understand what it is. This is actually in reference to my favorite Harry Styles Wattpad fan fiction. It's called Ariel. I'm not gonna get into everything it's about, but like literally I read Ariel and then all of the people that read Ariel and fangirled over it watched the Watermelon Sugar music video when it came out and it blew our minds because literally Harry in that music video is like Harry and Ariel and it's perfect and orange juice is a big part of it and roller skates. It's a thing, this shelf makes me smile so much, but to everyone else it's just like cute, I guess. Um, this just good vibes. I'm obsessed with VW buses. They're all over my apartment nothing book related. This is book related though This is the remainder of my shadow hunter collection. The infernal devices is by far my favorite I mean, I haven't read all the shadow hunters books yet, but like this series is god tier for me. I Still think about it. I still love it. Will Herondale has my entire heart and then right here I have this is the shadow hunters codex, which is important to the series. And then this is a print that has the angelic rune and that's my favorite page from this series. It's in clockwork prints. It's like the scene at the ball with, the, I'm not gonna give it away, but Will and Tessa. And I just, I, I love it so much. And then we've got more Harry Styles. And then this is my One Direction shelf. Uh, smells like One Direction getting back together with my deluxe albums. I mean, it's just, it's on brand, honestly. Okay, those were my first two bookshelves. And now we're gonna go to the main event where the real magic happens. My main bookshelves that are in my bedroom that I've kind of been hinting at in the back of my videos. You guys already wanted a bookshelf tour. And then once I started teasing these, you're like, we really want it. So here it is. We're gonna go through it. This is gonna take a while, but it'll be fun. <laughs> so just kind of looking at the bookshelves as a whole, I have it split by two main categories. Everything on the left is pretty much fantasy. Everything on the right is romance. I'm very just weird that way. I need my vibes like grouped together. So. I guess we'll just start on the left. I think that's the easiest thing to do. So here we have another vampire romance shelf, my third and final set of the Twilight series. These were the white copies for one of the year anniversaries. I can't remember right now. I've never touched these because I honestly don't want to because they're so pretty. And then right here we have my little Edward pop figure. This is actually the sparkly one from Hot Topic. You can't really tell in the sunlight, which is kind of ironic, but he's he sparkles and it's amazing. And then this is like one of my favorite things that I own. There is this shop, it's called the Nook Knacks Shop. I found her, I think, on TikTok originally. Now I follow her on Instagram and I'm just obsessed with her. She makes these little nook knacks, things, knickknacks for your book nooks and bookshelves and they have to do with series and they're just like so good. This is obviously the meadow scene. This is just like so freaking beautiful. Like when I first saw this on TikTok or Instagram, wherever she posted it, I felt like I was freaking eight years old all over again, falling unconditionally and irrevocably in love with Edward Cullen. Like it just is everything my dreams are made of and I'm obsessed with it. So that's the little Twilight section. And then again, another copy of the Crave series because Entangled Teen actually added me to their PR list and they sent me another set of the series, so I love that. And then the Blood and Ash slash Flesh and Fire series, probably like maybe my favorite series of all time. It's so hard to choose, but I have another Nook Knack right here. And if you've read from Blood and Ash, this is the Willow scene. This was my first one I got from her and my jaw literally dropped when I saw it. Her stuff is so inexpensive. Like each of these were like $15 and she hand makes them and there's so much, ignore the dust, oh my goodness. There's so much like detail put in it. Like look at this tree. It's got the little bench and her little veil is draped over it. It's just amazing. I love the shelf. It makes me so happy to look at. But moving from there, we move into my first <laughs> Greek mythology shelf. I say first because 
there's more than one. I love Greek mythology so much, just in general, but in books especially, it's so fun. This is my entire Rick Riordan shelf. So we have his general, like, Percy Jackson's Greek Gods book. This just like explains all the gods. I just wanted to have it to kind of complete the collection. And then we have the Percy Jackson and the Olympian series, the original cover of the book because this was the original one that I read back whenever I was in seventh grade and it just made me fall in love with Greek mythology and the series. So I had to have that on display. And then we have the Heroes of Olympus, which I have not read yet but I'm going to get into, I'm so excited for it just, ugh, I wanna dive back into this world, but my TBR is never ending, you guys know how it is. And then the Magnus Chase series, I still need the Cain Chronicles and the Trials of Apollo, but we'll worry about that later. This little tree over here has nothing really to do <laughs> with any of this, but I got this in New York at the 9-11 Memorial. This is the survivor tree. It was basically like the only thing left standing after 9-11, there was this pear blossom tree and it like, survived through everything and it just I got it there and I thought it was so beautiful and kind of reminded me of like Talia's tree and the lightning thief and New York New York I don't know there's a connection I just thought it was cute so I stuck it here so the rest of my Greek mythology books kind of spill over into this half of the next shelf we've got the Covenant series by Jennifer L. Armentrout the Hades Persephone series by Scarlet St. Clair Neon Gods a Song of Achilles and then this was my original book from seventh grade, Edith Hamilton's mythology. This has like all of the stories of all the gods and like this is where I first learned about it all. We briefly learned about Greek mythology in elementary school, but seventh grade is where we like really dived in and just, I got so obsessed with it. So I've read this a bunch of times and I still read it from time to time. It's just super interesting. I love it. And then just like miscellaneous fantasy, the Hush Hush series, Smoke and Bone, Beautiful, Carvel, Legendborn. Haven't read any of these. I've started the Hush Hush series. Need to get back to it. You guys are gonna notice there's many books on my shelf that I haven't read yet. It's kind of a problem, but you know, we're working our way through it. Next shelf, again, just more general fantasy, most of which I haven't read yet. Uh, I need to read Invisible Life, Batty LaRue. Y'all bug me to read it. Seriously, it's been way too long and it's absurd that I haven't read that book yet. But again, I'll get to it. Shadow and Bone. Told myself I was gonna read it when the Netflix series came out. Still haven't read it. Um, it's just, it's so hard to get into new series when I have series I haven't finished yet. It's just so much easier to read one-offs, but I need to do it. I need to get to it. And then moving down here, this is my very small sci-fi section. So we've got The Host by Stephanie Meyer. I've had this book for so long since it literally came out. I was so excited for it because I obviously love Twilight. So I bought it like on release day. And then a bunch of other books I haven't read. I haven't read The Maze Runner yet. <laughs> Again, just need to get to it. I haven't seen the movies either, so I purposely held off on the movies because of course I want to read the books first and I'm obsessed with Dylan O'Brien. Obviously, who isn't? Stiles Stilinski was like one of my first loves, so I'll get to it. Ready Player One, same thing. Gotta get to it. And then this is my little mini like horror slash thriller section. Um, haven't read any of these books either. What else is new? And then I've got an empty shelf down here. Kind of both of these shelves are empty. I have this like, and y'all tell me if I'm crazy. I have like shelf anxiety. I'm always afraid that my shelves are gonna get full and then I'm like not gonna have room for more books. So I'm really good about like after I read a book, if I'm not obsessed with it, I immediately put it in a pile to either sell or donate because I just, I get stressed that I'm not gonna have room on my shelves anymore. And also there's really no need to hold on to a book if you're not obsessed with it. They take up a lot of room. It's better to get a little money back for it for more books or donate it to someone that like wouldn't be able to otherwise get it. So that's why the bottom shelves are empty and they're probably always gonna remain empty because like the thought of them getting full scares me. And also my cats like to hang out down in there. That's kind of their little like nap spot. So it's fine. But let's move on to the second shelf, the romance kind of, the one I'm sure most of you guys are interested in, so let's do it. So up top here, we have perhaps my favorite shelf. This is the dark romance shelf. I have all of my queen Penelope Douglas books that I own. Literally can't say enough about her, so obsessed. And then a bunch of incomplete series on my part. I have the Center of Saints series, Vicious, haven't started it yet. Um, the Maid series, I've read the first one, haven't read the second one. Her Soul to Take, another one I just need to get to but yeah these are all kind of dark romances I need like three dark romance shelves honestly because there's so many more I want to get and they're just not gonna fit so I don't know what I'm gonna do with that but moving down this is kind of general nonfiction and just like favorites I guess you could call it my entire Colleen Hoover collection the queen of my life like honestly like the one of the greatest authors to ever exist I don't even know what to say about her you guys know you're all obsessed the Ravenhood series, which I just read, and I'll have a video coming on soon. 
uh, the amount of pain, but the amount of just, ugh. This series is literally Credence meets Devil's Night, if you've read those. It's that with a whole lot of pain mixed in. It's a great time, so freaking good. And then just, again, more miscellaneous kind of romancy nonfiction books. My favorite book to ever exist, The Fault in Our Stars. I've talked so much about this book, and I'll keep talking so much about this book. Changed my life. Um, I fear oblivion. That literally took like a full minute to focus. Y'all are welcome, but yeah. Fault in Our Stars, we stand. And then, uh, maybe my favorite shelf aesthetically. This is my rom-com shelf. I literally change the way this shelf looks every other week. I'm constantly switching it up. Just before I filmed this video, like a few days ago, I had it in order of the rainbow, and now I just, I don't know, I, I like the little sideways stacks, and I actually took a picture of this for my bookstagram. Quick plug, go follow. I just read the X Talk most recently, and I was obsessed with it, so I always do this. I like to change the book that's on display, whichever one I'm like feeling the most, or whichever one I just read. I had the love hypothesis facing forward for like the last two months because I was so obsessed, and then I'll just switch it up depending on the season or the mood or whatever, but yeah. The rom-com shelf, very cute and colorful. We've got Christina Lauren, Sally Thorne, Emily Henry, just all the things. Tessa Bailey, we love it. This shelf is also gonna be overflowing very shortly. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do, but it's fine. Oh my gosh, guys, we're almost done. How are you feeling? Um, <laughs> next shelf here, we've got my sports romance section, a section I never thought in my life I would have, but we've got the Off Campus slash Briar U series by Elle Kennedy. These are hockey romances, and then Walla Winnipeg and Me is a football romance, and then Culty by Mariana Zapata. Both of those are by Mariana Zapata. That is a soccer romance, the cheat sheet, football slash ballerina situation, and then again, here over is just kind of like miscellaneous romances and YA and nonfiction and a bunch of things I need to read. This one especially, you guys always comment and ask when I'm gonna read this. I promise I'll get to it. Okay, moving down, we have my little Nicholas Sparks collection. So, funny story, I've actually read basically every Nicholas Sparks books, not the more recent ones, but like back whenever I was I don't even know what grade, like junior high, I would go to my public library and I checked out every single Nicholas Sparks book. Like I went through every single one that my library had. I just, I don't know, he was one of the first authors that I just like went through all of his books and read them all. I really liked them. I don't think I love him as much now just because I've read like other things that I like better, but A Walk to Remember was always my favorite by him. It just absolutely wrecked me and just, I don't know, opened my eyes a lot. It's a really good story. And then these are just other iconic ones, but um, yeah. And then this little section right here, um, <laughs> I have some explaining to do, but hold on. This is my Harry Styles section, I like to call it, because we have most of the After series, uh, After originally started out as a Harry Styles fanfic, if you're not aware of that. They changed the name to Hardin Scott when she published, for obvious reasons, but it was about Harry Styles. And then we've got My Policeman, which is a movie he's actually starring in as the main character coming out next year, and he loved this book for a long time, like, I would always watch, and he would be, like, he was caught reading this book several times, like, carrying it around with him, so I already had wanted to read it just because, like, he liked it, and obviously he's in the movie now, so I read that book. So good, so heartbreaking, but yes. And then this one is one of his, he's always said this is, like, his favorite book. It's actually a nonfiction, Love is a Mixtape by Rob Sheffield. Need to get to it, haven't. And then the idea of you is, this girl wrote it, like, point of view, you're dating Harry Styles. I, I need to get to it. I'll for sure make a video on it when I do, but yeah. And then I have this, <laughs> Jesus Christ. This is, like, the definition of, like, quarantine mania. Like, I don't even know what else to say. Like, this was, I feel like everyone made, like, an absurd quarantine purchase, and this was mine. Um, Fun fact, the literal last thing I did really before the world ended was go to see Harry Styles on the Today Show in New York City where he was wearing this iconic outfit with the rainbow cardigan and it just like was the best day I've ever had in my life, like made my entire world and then literally a week and a half later the whole world shut down and it just like was the one thing that got me through quarantine thinking like I'm gonna get to see Harry Styles again one day and so <laughs> I found this girl on Etsy that made these custom plushies and she could make literally anything you wanted so I asked if she could make me <laughs> Harry wearing this outfit with this cardigan and she literally made it all by hand like hand crocheted this cardigan and it even has his tattoos y'all are gonna think I'm legit psychotic if you don't already like his tattoos are embroidered like you can see the like birds up here so, um, yeah, he even has his little vans, so <laughs> he lives on this little bookshelf next to his little section, and 
I love him. I literally don't care. But after that, our last and final shelf we have. This is my very small collection of classics. The Outsiders was... Ugh, I, the Lightning Thief was definitely my favorite book we read in school, but this was a very close second. I loved The Outsiders, and I've probably read it like five or six times. It's so good if you've never read it by S.E. Hinton. It's a classic. Go do it. And then Wuthering Heights. I actually haven't read Pride and Prejudice yet. I need to get to that. But um, Great Gatsby, of course. And then Speak was another one I loved. And I haven't read Fahrenheit 451. I don't think I'm going to like it very much, but I just feel like I need to read it. And then my very small nonfiction section. I have Unfiltered by Lily Collins. It's kind of her, like, autobiography. She is my... Besides Harry Styles. She's, like, my favorite celebrity. My favorite woman celebrity. I'm just... She's amazing. I think she's like the most beautiful person to ever exist and her she's so talented. Her acting is incredible. I love all her movies. I just am obsessed with her so I need to read that and then just <laughs> these two books were written by people that work for my company I work for so I haven't been a great employee because I haven't read them yet but I promise I will eventually. I don't know. That is it guys. I'm like so out of breath that actually like I feel like I'm sweating. That was a lot of work to go through all of those books but I did it for you. You're welcome. I love you so much. Um, I hope this was up to your standards. Again, like I said, if my bookshelves change drastically at any time or I get more... <laughs> Did you see Kiwi? That was... Drastically at any time. Oh, Draco's being so cute. Hi, dude. What do you think? You like the shelves? Oh my god. Handsome man. Okay, I'm gonna sit here and do the outro with him. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys so much. If you have any other video suggestions or requests, leave them in the comments down below. I'll be happy to do them. But yeah, that is it for me today. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you very soon.